Kifo, kifo, kifo wakina uruma Although his voice had the strength of flying high to penetrate and to be heard all across the globe, but his prayers to the angel that takes away the human breath did not spare him. Poor Remy, he really wished that when his time to die comes, the angel that takes away the human breath will notify him in advance to get prepared. However, Remy's wishes were not granted to him by the Almighty God. Remy Ongala was born in Kindu in 1947 in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where the hardships of his early life had a profound effect on his later songwriting. Both his parents had died by the time he was nine years. He was introduced to music by his father, a singer and an exponent of the Sansa a traditional thumb piano, and after dropping out of school joined Bantu success at the age of 17 years old. <laughs> Remy was a drummer and a singer but later switched to the guitar, performing with success Mwachame, Miki Jazz and then Grand Mika Jazz with whom he travelled to Uganda. In 1978, he was invited to Dar es Salaam, Tanzania by his uncle Kitenzugo Mzee Makasi to join his band Orchestra Makasi, whose Tanzanian influence rumba became popular across East Africa. Ongala became a celebrity by playing guitar with Orchestra Makasi. After working with them for three years, he joined Orchestra Super Marty Miller, named after a businessman who owned the band and bought their instruments. The move proved to be a massive success. Ongala's charismatic stage presence dominated the group, while other members of the band played guitars, saxophone and percussion and provided steady backing for Ongala's lilting, thoughtful and often controversial songs which dealt with subjects such as poverty and AIDS. His song Mambo Kwa Socks which literally means affairs of the socks, a plea for safe sex and for the young men to use condoms, was banned by Radio Tanzania but he continued to perform it at concerts. Several of his songs were critical of the country's elite and the government considered expelling him on immigration grounds but changed his thinking as Ongala became increasingly successful. This led to him being granted Tanzanian citizenship instead. In the late 1980s, Ongala claimed, and I quote him, I am successful in Tanzania because I write about serious topics. The lyrics are the most important part. All my songs have meaning. I once lived in trouble. Food was a problem and I picked up the bread that others had thrown away. All the songs result from the difficulties that I had in the past. I speak out for my fellow brothers." End of quote. Some of the most exciting sounds in Africa were created by Zaire Bon and Dar es Salaam bass guitarist and vocalist Remy Ongala and his seven-piece band orchestra Super Marty Miller, fusing the melodic drive of Sukus, East African guitar styles and Tanzanian rhythms. Ongala and the group accomplished their goal of inspiring audiences with their intellectual dance music. Remy Ongala also spoke out for fellow musicians and would often walk through the markets in Dar es Salaam, denouncing the stallholders who sold bootleg tapes. According to his friend the music writer Ronnie Graham, this was an event guaranteed to attract a big crowd as he explained the importance of copyright to one and all. He was angered when his adopted country reintroduced a Miss Tanzania contest and hit back by organizing an ugliest man competition which he won. After all, his nickname was Surambaya, which literally means ugly face. East African musicians were rarely successful in Britain as compared to West Africans and South African artists, but Ongala became known in the UK thanks to Peter Gabriel's Real World Record label and the Womad Festival which he visited regularly. In May 1989, he and orchestra Super Marty Miller travelled to the UK to make their first recording outside Africa for Real World. The album songs for the poor man included the pained and soulful Nasikitika, the thoughtful Muziki Asiliake Wapi, examining the role of musicians and their critics, and the story of the sufferings of a Tanzanian woman married to a rich man, among many other songs. <laughs> Africa, 
After years of singing and entertaining, Remy Ongala finally saw the light in 2007 and ditched world music for gospel. His last album was a gospel one titled Kwa Yesu Kuna Furaha. There are speculations that before Remy was delivered, his mother had miscarried twice, and therefore, when she was carrying Remy in her womb, she sought the help of a traditional doctor so that she could deliver safely. The traditional doctor advised her not to deliver in the hospital but in the bush, and after delivery she shouldn't shave the baby's hair. Remy's mother honored and that is the reason the singer remained dreadlocked until he saw the light that is when he shaved. Remy is also believed to have been born with two of his teeth, ready grown. Today I just want to notify each one of us some of the many things that many of us do not know about Ramathan Mtoro Ongala, famously known as Dr. Remy Ongala. Be on the nose since Remy Ongala was born in the year 1947, he never shaved his hair till the year 2003 when he shaved for the first time. This was because he suffered various illnesses for a very long period of time and this made him also to give his life to Jesus, shaving his long dreadlocks. Did you know Dr. Remy Ongala preferred for him to be called Remy the Ugliest Man? And did you know that Remy Ongala was the pioneer of the Ugliest Man competition in Tanzania? I tend to believe you now know the reason. Tanzanians need to thank Dr. Remy Ongala for them having bongo flavor today. Remy initiated bongo flavor music. Although he named his music Ubongo Music, this was because his music was full of messages that enticed his crowds. The title Ubongo Music began to be used frequently and the people got used to it because of Dr. Remy Ongala. Ubongo Music was later transformed to Bongo Flavor by the current musicians in Tanzania. So, why should we not applaud Dr. Remy Ongala for steering the name Bongo Flavor? Take that and hide it at your corner. Remy Ongala has only two records that have never been broken by either Diamond Platinums or Ali Kiba. Yes, take it because it's a fact. One of his many hit songs, Remy Ongala, was called Kipenda Roho. What you don't know is that this song has been used in one of the most famous films in the world known as Natural Bond Killers. It is a famous film in the world that was created in the United States of America and used Remy Ongala's song Kipenda Roho, a record that both Diamond and Ali Kiba are yet to break or achieve. The second thing is that in a span of one week, a period of seven days, Remy Ongala used to do shows five days in a week. Famous bongo flavor artists have never beaten Remy's record. That was in 1981 and Remy's concerts were always packed. Just like nowadays, young adults crowd in various nightclubs. Lastly, it is nine years since the death of the famous Dr. Remy Ongala, who passed on at the age of 63 years old after suffering illness for a long period of time ailing from kidney failure, heart conditions and high blood pressure, illnesses that slowly chewed his life for about 20 years. Dr. Remy Ongala got married to his English wife Tony, a former PE teacher at the Tanzania International School in the year 1979. They lived in a modest bungalow with their four children Jessica, Kali, Aziza and Seame and a minagre of dogs, cats and parrots. Dr. Remy was modest, magnanimous, generous, open and honest as you can hear in his music. Indeed, he will be forever remembered for his impact on the East African music industry. For today, let me stop at that. Remember to subscribe, like, share and comment.